And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, for as much as my lord the king has come again in peace unto his own house. And he shows him that his beard hasn't been trimmed and his clothes haven't been washed, that he hasn't been occupied with self-interest while the king was gone. Here's a man who is saying, Look, I didn't have any heart. I didn't have any longing, any desire. I didn't want to be in polite company. I didn't want to go to the parties. I didn't feel at home here, David. My heart went with you. My feet were lame and I couldn't go, but my heart went with you. And I've just been waiting for you to come back. Are we occupied with the things of time? Trying to get invited to the world's parties, so to speak. Wanting to be acceptable in the world's society. If we are occupied with self and things of time and sense, it will be so disappointing. When the king comes back and asks us, what were you doing? What were you doing? Were you waiting for the king? Were you looking after the interests of the king? You know, there are little companies of God's people all across this land. They're, in the words of the hymn, content to let the world go by, to know no gain or loss, in the end, Christian, what will really matter? When the fire is done, it's burning, and the gold is left, the gold and the silver and the precious stones. When at last all the huzzes and the hubbub and the noise and the busyness and the activities and the planning and the expenditures, when the books are finally all settled, it seems to me there's only one thing that'll matter. Not what you think of it or what I think of it but what he thinks of it. And will it be, well, done? Or well done? Will it be that I've just kept on keeping on, or have I kept the faith? Is it just finished? Or will I have finished my course with joy? May God help us to live with an eye on the glory, longing for the King to come back. And in the meantime, occupying for him, looking after his business until he comes.